Hey guys, this is... Ah, oh, whatever. <sighs> if you guys don't remember, I did a video, um... Another stupid rant video for... The Avatar The Last Server getting another live-action reboot. It was pretty immature for, for of me, maybe, probably it was immature of me, but... If you, if anyone is following my videos or my channel as a whole, you know why I'm why I'm angry with this. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that it maybe the original creators have something in mind, maybe, but I don't know. This time in this video, I'm th gonna talk about reboots, uh, sp specifically cartoon reboots, and uh, why I think uh, it is a bad idea, and maybe how why it is also a good idea. I I'm gonna talk about reboots in general. Now, if you guys don't know, reboots are nothing new. We had reboots so many times that it is crazy to not to think about it. It hasn't happened. Uh, many years later. If, if my camera freezes time to time is because um, the lightning in my room sometimes is a bit jittery because the weather sometimes is confusing. <laughs> God damn it, I, I'm off topic here. But reboots for cartoons is nothing new. We had reboots for tran Transformers, Batman, Spider-Man, even X-Men, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, so many reboots that I can't even count, but with reboots, with reboots, uh, it is, I'm not saying I completely hate reboots as a whole, I like them if they have effort put into them, and with reboots, there are several reboots I really like uh, for different kind of shows. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2003 was a good, very good reboot. It was a dark, greedy, and also at the same time comedic. Uh, it was a nice rep rep representation of from the 1980s uh, Ninja Turtles show, and also from the and also the combination of the comic book series. And the, the 2003 show more, was more heavily inspired from the greedy comic book series of the Ninja Turtles that rather than uh, the 1980s Turtles because uh, even though I myself grew up with the uh, 1980s Turtles with the 80s Turtles, Ninja Turtles uh, for me, even though I kind of like, like I still love the theme song but and I kind of like the premise a bit but for me, the 80s show was a bit goofy and silly for me but when I saw the 2003 show on TV my expectations just went berserk, like holy shit, they actually made a dark and greedy version of the Ninja Turtles series. Who could have thought of that? And oh, there was also Transformers, Transformers 1988 from the 80s as well. It hasn't, I won't say it has aged well to be perfectly honest and even though I kind of grew up with the, some of the episodes of the 80s show, I watched Transformers Beast Wars and Transformers Animated on TV. On TV, and with those versions, they actually took more risks, had added more interesting stories, and and uh, made some character development and tried to make better animation. Now, even though Beast Wars has very bad CG. I think the best Transformers representation of you know the entire Transformers thrill of the entire Transformers reboots is definitely Transformers Prime because it took itself seriously. It was made for both kids and adults, and a lot of people who are big Transformers fans, including myself, because I love giant robots. Duh. And I feel like it was the, like the best representation of Transformers. It, hell, they even made Megatron terrifying, and that is a, a feat I really admired for the creators of Transformers Prime to accomplish. Give claps for the, the creators of Transformers Prime. Now even though I, the Transformers Prime is on Netflix, in my country that is, um, it only has one season and they don't air the other seasons and the movie, and which is kind of, I feel like it is kind of weird considering that Transformers Prime was even nominated for an Emmy Award and that is just weird. There's also there's also another great reboot, Thund Thundercats 2011. Uh, the original Thundercats, like I said, the, some of the 80s shows did not age and do not age well. And the fact that people actually 
try to put their heart and soul to actually watch the originals and try to recreate something more s recreate the same property but try to make it better that is something I really appreciate and uh, from people that do so there's all there's a, another reboot <laughs> there are so many reboots that got there that it, it just it just hurts like but there have been also bad reboots. Let's talk about Tom and Jerry. The original Tom and Jerry made by Han Hannah Barbera and made by Joseph Barbera and William Hannah. I still own the DVD collection. Like I said, I might do, I'm, I really want to do the my animated DVD slash Blu-ray collection of my animated shows, movies, because I want to share guys what I have and what do you think of me. Uh, do I have good taste in animation or do I have like bad taste of animation? Uh, <laughs> that is a bit weird comparison, but I wanted to see if you, if you guys really think I have good taste in you know animated shows, but. That is a topic for another time, but uh, with reboot with Tom and Jerry, he had so many reboots and Looney Tunes as well. And I feel like the only time Looney Tunes did something right was with Roger Rabbit movie, but with Tom and Jerry, I don't know what happened. Like Tom and Jerry, I I, can't, I still love that uh, it is still popular by the, today's standards, but the way they make uh, some of these reboots, like. Especially the really Hanna Barbera cartoons, especially had these kind of weird reboots with uh, kids, like they turn the adult versions of these characters into kids' versions of themselves because it was some kind of 90s thing for whatever reason. I think it was because of Rug maybe Rugrats was popular, but I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. And we also had. I really don't want to say it, but we also had live action reboots of or remakes of classic cartoons like Garfield, The Flintstones, The Woody Woodpecker. I do not want to talk about it because when I watched the Star Trek credit talk about it and saw a specific scene. Let it just say I will probably not look at ice cream, ice cream cones the same way again. Fuck you, Hollywood. Oh my god, sorry about this rant. Uh, I really don't want to turn this into a rant, but it is really hurting me because I feel like I actually wrote this in cartoon. I mean, I, have, I even told this about uh, about in the last Airbender, you know, Netflix's Airbender rant video, and I feel like live action. Turning animation to live action never works because I feel like now we're gonna get li the Lion King live action remake uh, in 2019 and I feel like no, I don't want this, like people still praise and love the original Lion King cartoon, even I, even I went out of my way to buy the DVD collection of the Lion King, uh, not the DVD collection but the the first movie is DVD of the Lion King because I remember watching it as a kid. The Lion King was the one of the first animation anything animated related really got me into animation and the fact that people just dropping to the animation as as itself is just depressing because nowadays we barely could get to go to the animated shows and uh, barely any action cartoons and even. Disney is dropping 2D animation from their movies and now they're just remaking 2D animated movies into live action and I don't see why that why they do this and I know why they do this. Sweet 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 money because we because we care about money and nothing else but it is really hurting because with reboots nowadays it's just we're getting so many reboots that we barely have any original ideas. Even I want to go to the store after this video and buy some paper and try to try to actually draw my ideas for an action cartoon. But currently, how you know, even though I'm very bad at drawing, I still try. I even went out of my way to actually draw 
certain animated characters uh, if you guys saw my dropping video I will put the link in the description and also in the comment section so you guys could check it out I actually put ha my heart and soul and effort into these drawings even though I j kind of copied them from Google but I still tried and tried to recreate these Google images you know from the actual creators and try to recreate the you know uh, these characters in you know into Pen with pencil and paper because that's how it all started with 2D animation hand draw animation but nowadays everything is just computers technology evolves and nowadays th that kind of effort is kind of gone I I'm not saying I'm completely against computer animation but hand draw animation is barely um, non-existent now and that is depressing because been, yes, hand draw animation is a lot harder than computer animation but I feel like with hand drawn it, it is it, because without without hand drawn animation, <coughs> sorry, it's hard to breathe. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> yeah, I need water. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys, I had to drink some drink some water because doing these kind of videos, especially without taking a breather and using these headphones only because I didn't have a legit microphone without using the headphones, it is really frustrating to do these kind of videos. Anyways, off topic again. <laughs> God damn it. I always do this. <laughs> but what I wanted to say is that without hand drawn animation, we could never get, you know, computer animation, 3D animation, because 2D animation, the drawings, art, it is basically the ancestor of the all the things we get nowadays and people and it is kind of sending it that people drop to the animation as a whole and I really can't stand reboots. Cartoon Network for example handles reboots goddamn awfully and now they want to reboot fun Thundercats with this cheapy kind of style horrible animation cal art style and a lot of people are just gonna complain about why are you dissing about cal art style it is the best uh, style ever like I, I, I read these comments so much that I'm really just getting pissed off about this like cal art cal animation it's not, I'm not saying it's completely awful but it feels lazy especially on Cartoon Network and many other animated shows because everything nowadays looks the same and that is really depressing what I loved about animated shows especially from Cartoon Network from the 90s to mid 2000s is that each show had its own unique style its own animation style its own character designs that could differentiate what kind of show this is and also what kind of uh, type of genre the show is and seeing this kind of you know, different art styles and different, uh, you know, character models and whatnot from animation, from Master Animation especially, it is really depressing and because of that we, people, <laughs> people, I feel like, especially with the cartoon, modern cartoon community is defending uh, simple, cheaper animation styles. People still defend Steven Universe and I'm not saying Steven Universe is a bad show, but I feel like it has problems. It has some really legit problems. Not everything is perfect. The problem is that people don't just don't want to accept the fact that not everything is perfect nowadays, and there are problems because we need because if we don't learn from our mistakes, then we can learn, then we can prepare for the future or the present, and because of that. It is really hard to talk about this because with reboots there are no original ideas anymore. There is actually a cinema since video which sadly was removed uh, that they are making a Vinnie the Pooh remake, a live action remake, and he, I think his name was Jeremy, I think, and he made a legit point about Disney and anything animation related, uh, basically, with, especially with Disney, that. We, be, we won't have any original ideas anymore, we just getting the same thing over and over again and people will get sick of it and he said something really legit and I I want to speak this for all of you and he definitely spo sp spoke to all of us as, as people if you have original ideas, if you have any artistic skills, writing, imagination, whatever just do it, try to publish it as much as you can, 
try to fight for your freedom, try to make something creative, something original, something amazing. And because of that, I, I have ideas, I want to write them because writing is like... I have uh, like this pilot thing going on with this action cartoon I have called... I have the show called Dragon Warrior. No, not Paul from uh, Kung Fu Panda, don't get the wrong idea, but this show is about... Uh, main character about a main character who discovers a magical sword that is uh, buried beneath uh, bur beneath the forest somewhere near far from his home and he finds this ancient temple that doesn't that shouldn't exist in our world and he finds a magical sword when he picks it up he nothing happens in the day one but uh, it comes to a cliffhanger with these kind of weird uh, dragon scale statues with swords like going like knights or something the eyes start glowing and and it comes to a cliffhanger because you know the show is going on with a bang like I have these crazy ideas with with this animated show with this crazy action oriented show and I have like this I have also this amazing uh, emotional prequel idea for the show that could pull people in their heartstrings and from my imagination I might think making the uh, Dragon Warrior series into the kind of similar style to the spectacular Spider-Man maybe uh, maybe add some anime style kind of character designs or something but the, the, the prequel idea, I wanted to make it like an anime style, like Avatar The Last Airbender or the original Teen Titans, something like that. And because I can't draw and I have these ideas, it is real saddening because um, I have these amazing ideas. I wanted to create something new. I want to create something original, something people in all ages can enjoy. The fact that nowadays people think kids are idiots and don't understand good storytelling, think that they don't understand good storytelling, can handle two, 22 minute run times, it is saddening. Hell, even Gendy Tartowski, one of my favorite, uh, my, my, one of my heroes of animation, one of my favorite people who created one of my f most favorite anime shows like Dexter's Laboratory, uh, Samurai Jack, and even I even went out and bought the Star Wars Clone Wars series from 2003, and when I watch it, I feel like, hmm, this reminds me of Samurai Jack, and I like it because he knows how to tell visual storytelling really well, and they focused on that because even though I was a kid, I still understood what the story, what each episode, what kind of, what each episode was, what kind of story each episode was telling. Sorry, can't talk today. I need to take a breather sometimes. <laughs> I haven't talked to anyone, so I am always like forever alone. But still, with animation, it is really exciting, especially with Western animation, that they completely try to neglect uh, good talent, uh, original ideas. They want to basically go see the easy route, and they don't want to take. Uh, full responsibility of doing something more creative and something more, you know, more risky because what I like about animated shows from the 90s to the mid 2000s is that they had risks, they could show something, sometimes even horrific, something even uh, sub psychologically scarring, but this is something we all deal in the real world, we all deal with these kind of stuff in the real world, the fact that you're actually hiding this stuff, these kind of messages and lessons from kids, that is showing that you don't care about the future, you don't care about the future of uh, how the kids will turn out, what kind of people they will become in the future, what kind of decisions they will make in the future, it's like they, you don't care anymore. And uh, whoever watches this video, I might think that I'm talking bullshit, but I'm not. I'm really, I am worried about this because I'm not adding any music in this video, I'm not talking, I'm not trying to make a joke, I'm really extremely worried about this. And I don't want to make it another red video because I want something new, I want, like there's Dragon Prince, uh, a show a lot of people talk about, I haven't watched it but I, I might think about watching it you know, on Netflix because it's still, uh, subscribe to Netflix, uh, to Netflix, I still pay 10 euros every month so I can watch uh, good quality uh, shows, uh, including um, Full Metal Alchemist, and I'm spitting all over, <laughs> god damn it, 
but with this stuff it is really worrying because kids these days they don't yes they are kids but it, because of shows that you completely shoving in them like Teen Titans Go and Rise of the Teenage Mutants, you're treating them like idiots and you just want them to turn it's like these good creators want them to become mindless people they don't they don't understand anything and it's bad enough that school is torturing kids like if they want to watch a show that is action-packed and uh, story driven they could do that they could a lot of shows like teen, the original Teen Titans encourages kids to move on forward and try to not give up on their dreams no matter how bad people treat them that is what I want from animated shows nowadays a lot, and the, the fact that Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon and, half the time in Disney neglect, neglect that is really worrying and, the, and I am not and I really don't want to say about this kind of topic but the another problem with I have with these watered down shows movies video games whatever is with, with the inter, entertain, entertainment industry as a whole is what worries me is that people listen to the bad side of these fandoms or internet people and especially with the SJW feminists whatever they listen to them and they try to hammer in some gay lesbian bullshit in there and <laughs> I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying I'm really against people who want to find love if you want to be gay lesbian so be it so be it but please don't hammer that in in sh movies and make a bad movie because people defend stuff like this because no matter how bad the movie is no matter how good it is they just care about this and nothing else they don't care about the story the the drama the character development of the show or movie or whatever they only care about like shippings and what happened like what what exactly happened and I'm saying shippings have never been but Comparing to back then and nowadays, it's like, am I on Mars? Am I really on Mars? Quote, quote from Nostalgia Critic, if you guys don't know, but I don't know, but then like, this video won't mean anything to any of you, probably get some few likes, views, whatever, but I really want to, talk, want to say about this, I want to say about this, I don't hate reboots. If you put your heart, soul, and you actually try to recreate something from the original and try to do a re actual research on the original and try to recreate something better from the original but don't change the source material too much, then I salute you and you did a good job. You made people who are fans of animation proud. But to those who make bad reboots and create something stupid that treat, treat kids like idiots, then <laughs> you, it, it will mean nothing. It will mean absolutely nothing to you guys. Like, <sighs> this video is a bit too long. I'm sorry, guys, but. This is something I really want to talk about because this whole reboot thing needs to stop. I'm not saying I'm against reboots, but if you're doing bad reboots, then and the fact that bad reboots are getting praised and getting uh, accepted by society, then there's no hope. There is no hope for originality, for creativity, nothing. There's no hope. This is Salomon17 um, signing off and I want to tell you like this video, share this video to spread this message, please do it because it is really hurting me that we're going, we're going so far away from something greater than we already have. The fact that people always do, do this kind of making excuses is just for kids or it's the future try to try to understand it is the future but one of the comments in one of the videos they said 
just because things moving move forward into the future does not mean you need to be lazy and try to make some things worse because nowadays it feels like things are getting just worse by the minute my parents always say you need to look at things positively but how can I when something I love something I grew up with gets destroyed like this Good shows like Spectacular Spider-Man, one of my favorite animated shows, one of my favorite rebooted Spider-Man shows, gets criminally cancelled because Disney bought the rights for TV rights for Spider-Man. Thanks, Disney. And I'm still upset about this because we we could have gotten one of the greatest, one of the most well-received Sp Spider-Man shows of all time, one of the most well-received. They could have gotten an Emmy award even, and it gets cancelled. Like this video, share this video with others, and subscribe to give me full support, to at least give me some positive vibes, because I can't handle this negativity, it is just frustrating, because like I said, I'm dealing with negativity on a daily basis, because I'm still struggling with college, I'm still struggling with trying to balance out YouTube, and I can't do everything all, all at once because I'm one person and I'm and we all are getting older and if thing, things don't work out better for the future before we all die uh, of old age then then what what hope we have for the future try to ask yourselves that what hope we will have for the hu for the future. This is Simon with seven signing off.